Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make another useful component called phosphorus tribromate. The reason we are making it is that it can be used as a brominating agent for alcohols. Only two chemicals are needed. 10 grams of red phosphorus, which is a huge excess, and about 11 milliliters of elemental bromine. The last bromine I have will be used for this. This means that we soon will have to make some more of it and by some I mean a lot. Because bromine and phosphorus dry bromide are toxic, we are going to put on gloves and a gas mask for our own safety. We began by weighing out about 10 grams of red phosphorus. As we are using a huge excess anyways, the exact amount doesn't matter. All red phosphorus was added to a 250ml Erlmeyer flask. A smaller flask might have been a better choice. The 11ml of bromine were added to a pressure equalizing addition funnel. Just look at these beautiful red and deadly vapors. The gas mask wasn't our only safety precaution. We also had a fan running on high speed in the background. Grease was applied to the joints and everything was connected. The addition funnel was placed on top of a reflux condenser. The entire apparatus we are using looks like this. We got a hot plate, the flask containing the red phosphorus, a reflux condenser on top of it and then the addition funnel. To keep nasty vapors away from the atmosphere, everything that comes over will be let into this gas trap. It only contains water, but because of the large surface area, it works rather well and I don't have to bubble anything through the water. Our first bromine was added. It created this white thick smoke. The reaction is very simple. Bromine reacts with phosphorus to form phosphorus dry bromide and phosphorus pentabromide. Phosphorus dry bromide is a clear liquid, while phosphorus pentabromide is a yellow solid. Both phosphorus bromides are formed here. A phosphorus axis will lead to the formation of phosphorus tribromide, while a bromine axis will lead to the formation of mainly phosphorus pentabromide. The yellow orange stuff on the walls is a mixture of bromine and phosphorus pentabromide. To keep it from becoming too violent, the entire addition of bromine was carried out over the course of around one hour. The reactions have time to react and there won't be any aggressive phosphorus fire. In the flask, we now have a mixture of phosphorus dry bromide, phosphorus pentabromide, elemental phosphorus and leftover bromine. Our goal is not to have a mixture of this, but only phosphorus dry bromide. Therefore, we will have to perform a reflux. Leftover bromine is going to react with leftover phosphorus to form phosphorus dry bromide and phosphorus pentabromide. Leftover phosphorus pentabromide will also react with the phosphorus to form phosphorus dry bromide, our desired product. Phosphorus tribromide apparently has a boiling point of around 170 degrees Celsius, but I had to crank the hot plate up to the maximum heat in order to make the vapor front climb. I don't know what's wrong with this devilish chemical, but we even had to wrap the flask in aluminium foil to make the vapor front climb. It took about half an hour, but afterwards everything in the flask has cleared up. The stuff in the condenser and in the top of the flask doesn't matter, as it won't stand the flask anyways. So the hot plate was turned off. To make it cool back down to room temperature even faster, all aluminium foil was removed. As you can see here, there's still bromine vapor left in the flask. But as there's also phosphorus, this doesn't matter. You can see that because of the bromine, a little phosphorus pentabromide was again formed. The next step is going to be purification. The easiest form of purification would be a simple distillation and we are not even going to use a thermometer as this isn't necessary for distilling phosphorus dry bromide. As I disassembled the apparatus and tried to connect the distillation bridge, I stumbled across a problem. I wasn't able to disconnect the glass adapter thing, so I used the heat gun to gently heat it up and afterwards it was easy to remove. If you do it gently, you could also use a blowtorch for this. This problem, which has now been solved, won't stop us anymore. The flask was heated and it didn't want to boil over. Trust me, I heated it long enough. So I turned off the hot plate again and we switched it out for a Bunsen burner. We lit it up using a handheld torch and then we just had to wait for the liquid to start boiling, which didn't take too long. Aluminium foil was still used to speed up the distillation as I hate to wait. Only 20 minutes after the start of the distillation, everything had distilled over. The Bunsen burner was now turned off. If we continue heating, we might run the risk of creating a lot of white phosphorus and we don't want that at the moment. You can now see a lot of beautiful black tar. The receiving flask was now disconnected, stoppered and placed on top of a cork ring. You may have already noticed that the product is slightly discolored, while it should actually be perfectly clear. Well, the problem why it is not perfectly clear 
is that in the hose connected to the gas scrubber, there was still some bromine left, which created phosphorus pentabroma in the flask, but the product should still be useful for my purposes, which are brominating alcohols. For long-term storage, ampules are always the best choice. I always make sure, however, to pre-weigh my ampules in order to determine the yield. I have used a PDFE-lined flask before for storing phosphorus pentachloride and I'm never going to do this again. Some chlorine leaked and got behind the PTFE seal. It destroyed rubber and thereby completely destroyed the PTFE sealed bottle. A few drops of phosphorus tribromide were still left in the flask, so I decided to have some fun with them. Some distilled water was squirted in. I expected a violent reaction, but it didn't happen. Afterwards, I took a look at it and I was astonished. Look closely and you will be able to see a blob of phosphorus tribromide sitting under the water and not reacting. As it turns out, phosphorus tribromide and water won't mix very well and if you don't shake them, they won't react violently, but the phosphorus tribromide is just going to sit at the bottom. In total, we collected 23.7 grams of phosphorus tribromide. This represents yields of around 61%. The yields might be increased significantly by continuing the distillation for a little longer. If you liked today's video, make sure to drop me a like and if you don't want to miss out on further chemistry content like that, make sure to subscribe. These videos aren't cheap to produce, so if you want to support me, make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Anyways, I wish all of you a great day, until next time.